Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm David Kerr from Lansing in Michigan, and these are your latest news headlines from around the world. Pope Francis says he is pained by the end of the Israel-Hamas ceasefire agreement, which broke down on Friday. Speaking during his Sunday Angelus address in Rome, the Holy Father said that the end of the ceasefire can only mean death, destruction and misery. The Hamas attack on Israel on October the 7th killed 1,200 people, with around 240 others taken hostage. Since then, Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry say that more than 15,500 people have been killed in Israel's retaliatory campaign, including about 6,000 children. Pope Francis says he hopes that all those involved in the conflict can reach a new ceasefire agreement as soon as possible by taking what he called the courageous path to peace. Four people have been killed in an explosion during an Islamist terror attack upon a Catholic congregation in the southern Philippines. The incident occurred on Sunday morning during Holy Mass at the Gymnasium of Mindanao State University in Marawi. That's the country's largest Muslim city. 42 others suffered mostly minor wounds, authorities say, adding that the situation was under control. According to the AFP news agency, the Islamic State group has claimed responsibility for the attack. Pope Francis has assured the victims of the incident and their families of his prayers. Meanwhile, the Pope has also called upon religious leaders to promote peace and protect the environment in his video message to the 28th United Nations Climate Change Conference, currently being held in the city of Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. The Holy Father's message was relayed to the Faith Pavilion at the Global Summit. He told delegates that it is urgent that religions, without falling into the trap of syncretism, give a good example. The COP28 Summit began on November the 30th and will continue until December the 12th. A senior US politician has repeated his call for the release of Bishop Rolando Alvarez in Nicaragua. Bishop Alvarez of Matagalpa was sentenced to 26 years in prison in February after consistently speaking out against the dictatorship of Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega. Speaking at the hearing of the US House of Representatives Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on Global Health, Global Human Rights and International Organisations, Congressman Chris Smith of New York said that the charges against Bishop Alvarez were trumped up and called for his release immediately. Out of an abundance of concern for Bishop Alvarez's welfare and health, said Congressman Smith, let Bishop Alvarez come to the United States or to the Vatican or somewhere else or stay right in Nicaragua where he can again serve the people, preach the good news of the gospel and care for the weakest and most vulnerable. A German tourist has been killed in a suspected terror attack near the Eiffel Tower in Paris on late Saturday. In a pre-attack video, the 26-year-old suspect, who is a French national, expressed his allegiance to the Islamic State. Two other people sustained non-life-threatening wounds during the knife attack. The suspect was later arrested by French police. He told them that he said he could no longer bear to see Muslims dying in both Afghanistan and Palestine. A notable Hong Kong pro-democracy activist says she's decided to emigrate to Canada due to the strain of persecution from China's communist regime, which took over control of the former British colony back in 1997. Agnes Chow was a founding member of the pro-democracy campaign group Demosisto, which is now defunct. She was sentenced to 10 months imprisonment back in 2020 for taking part in an unauthorised pro-democracy gathering. Over the years, Miss Chow has also faced constant surveillance. A Christian man who is accused of blasphemy in Pakistan has gone into hiding. Harum Shazad from the Punjab province stands accused of blasphemy after sharing Bible verses on Facebook. Mr Shazad was granted bail last month and was released from the Sargoda district jail on November the 15th. Despite that though, he has now gone into hiding. Bishops in Canada have criticised efforts by governments and other organisations to compel Catholic health care facilities to perform euthanasia or assisted suicide. In a statement published on November the 30th, the Canadian Bishops' Conference said that they would oppose efforts to pressure Catholic health care facilities into providing euthanasia, which is contrary to Catholic teaching. Euthanasia was legalised in Canada in 2016 for the terminally ill. In 2021, that law was expanded to include the non-terminally ill, Last year, there was over 13,000 such deaths in Canada. Hundreds of pro-life campaigners participated in the annual pro-life march in Valletta and Malta on Sunday. Life is a right was the theme of the rally, which was organised by the Life Network Foundation. Speakers included the American pro-life campaigner Patricia Sandoval. She praised the pro-life laws of Malta, where abortion is still illegal in all cases. 
Four prominent women's rights advocates have been reportedly detained by the Taliban government in Afghanistan. According to the campaign group Human Rights Watch, those detained are Zulia Parzi, Neda Parvani, Maniza Siddiqui and Parisa Azada, each of whom have been vocal critics of the country's Islamist regime. The Taliban regained control of Afghanistan two years ago. Finally, the tourist centre at Magdala in Galilee in northern Israel have launched a virtual pilgrimage of the Holy Land to mark the beginning of the season of Advent. Those who subscribe to the Magdala Advent programme will receive a weekly email containing a, a video and materials for each Advent Sunday. It's all part of the centre's seasonal campaign entitled Star of Wonder, Advent Pilgrimage of Peace. Well, that's your latest headlines for now. Do join us for more tomorrow. You can also join us at swnews.org for more news updates. Shalom.